we once thought that our world was the only world and that our sun was the only sun and then after the 150,000 years or so it took to figure out what a galaxy was we of course concluded that our galaxy was the only galaxy in all three of these assumptions we proved just about as wrong as any creature can possibly be is it so irrational to suppose that our universe is not the only universe in fact in light of our past mistakes our 100 percent failure rate might it not be slightly irrational to presume otherwise we have a long history of thinking that the horizon was the edge of the world yet every horizon we've ever reached physically or intellectually only revealed another horizon in the distance just because we can't see over the mountain doesn't mean there's nothing there it never has before why shouldn't there be other universes why other than for religious purposes is it unthinkable unthinkable what types of things have we ever found that there was only one of there's no direct evidence for the existence of other universes but nor should we expect there to be at this stage in our cosmic self-education some theoretical physicists suspect that there may be clues in the space-time geometry of the early universe or clues in the analysis of gravity waves should their existence be confirmed or in the weakness of gravity itself compared to the three other known forces we may never even in principle be able to directly confirm the existence of other universes but we may be able to infer them with a better understanding of what happened here in this universe in that instant before there was light it's an unanswerable question for now but one with the potential to rationally answer the most unanswerable question of all why are we here if ours is the only universe there will ever be the existence of life here is a haunting coincidence which we may never escape but if there are other universes with different laws different natures then for every other universe that ever existed the emergence of life of some kind becomes ever more likely and with a sufficiently large number of universes the eventual existence of a universe with laws that permit life becomes inevitable we need only a source of energy repetition and variation strike the string of a musical instrument at random anywhere along its length and you're unlikely to hit a pure harmonic but if you do it enough sooner or later you'll catch a harmonic more perfectly than Segovia or Kyung Wa Chung ever did what if there is a multiverse a metaverse an alphaverse where the infinite regress is averted by laws we simply cannot imagine different geometry dimensions maybe additional forces energies unknown to us ultra dense spaces that give birth to universes as if blowing bubbles in a higher dimensional space for all we know beyond the horizon big bangs are as common as lightning out to sea or maybe the clue is in the similarities between our universe and black holes maybe it's bubbles within bubbles it's not that I think I know it's that I know with absolute certainty that I don't and I know with seemingly identical certainty that nobody knows because nobody can we have no idea what might be possible in whatever passes for eternity without more data any speculation at all including my own concerning the existence of a multiverse or its non-existence for that matter is pointless in any scientific or philosophical sense yet just like any idea if you are truly a free thinker you can try the idea on just for a few minutes like a pair of sunglasses just to see how the world looks to see if it makes any more sense so let's imagine a hypothetical situation in which universes can form naturally separated from each other by spatial or dimensional distance or in a linear time so vast as to be beyond the grasp of all but the most insane mathematician let's imagine what reality might be like for one of those universes where life like ours is simply a possibility in the beginning the very beginning there was darkness then a fracturing of symmetry one force becomes four then 
there was electromagnetism and only then could there be light, some of which would condense to become something like quarks and gluons, which in turn become protons and electrons, and all of this within a millionth of our hypothetical universe's first ever second. And in the next three minutes, cosmic expansion reduces the energy density, lowering the temperature to a chilly one billion Kelvin. Electrons cannot combine with nuclei to make the first true atoms. It won't be cool enough for that to happen for another half a million years. But let's fast forward nine billion years to long after the gas clouds have collapsed to form galaxies, and during which generations of stars have lived and died and a planet and a stable star have formed from the debris. A planet where the laws of physics have had time to maneuver particles by constant action into every pore of possibility. Bonding, growing, breaking, recombining parts, ever changing, until, after another 500 million years, a self-replicating molecule forms. Life. Energy to atoms, to beings made of atoms made of energy. 4,000 million years of constant change later, intelligence emerges. And these energy beings, puzzled by all that they see, want to understand where they came from. They look at their bodies and they see imperfection. They look at their world and they see energy, repetition, variation, patterns, complexity, surely the signature of a maker. So they look for gods, but they only find their own words. So they look deeper and see chaos, and then patterns within the chaos, patterns coming from the chaos. They see it in sound waves, pressure waves, vibration, oscillation, in light, in gravity, electricity, in physics, chemistry, and biology. Wherever forces meet in harmony, shapes emerge, patterns in order from chaos, Waves in phase, crossing, pausing on their way towards chaos again one day. They look closer and find numbers beneath the chaos. Simple rules, everywhere. The energy beings have finally noticed that numbers are the key to understanding their universe. But why should it be like this, they ask. And then they discover that they live in a quantized universe, where matter and force can only exist as units of identical size, which can therefore be calculated, predicted, to 11 decimal places. Their universe is rational, equations balance, and of all the things of which they could have been made, of all the things they'd feared they might find, they discover that they were made of the purest energy, in a state of emergent physical harmony an unwavering insistence by their universe that they must exist, like patterns in mathematical chaos. They were still just animals. They were still just chemicals, but before all of that, they were once a blinding flash of light. To the best of their knowledge, they exist simply because their existence is possible. Now the question is, what makes you think you're not living in that universe right now? How would you know? How would you know? No test you could carry out here, no observation you could make here would look any different there. You wouldn't be able to tell between the universe I described and the one you're living in. Worse still, every scientific experiment you could currently conduct here will only confirm that you are a being made of harmonic energy, living in a deceptively simple universe. If you think this all sounds like new age nonsense, then you have to tell me where I can find an E that does not equal an MC squared, or an MA without a corresponding and exactly proportionate and measurable F. And if all this doesn't sound like the universe your God made, then it's fair to say that it sounds like your God didn't make this universe. It doesn't mean an intelligence wasn't involved, say, in the fracturing of the superforce at the very beginning. It just means that you are almost certainly giving thanks to the wrong thing. With everything that has happened since the first flash being explicable by a billion small natural steps, why postulate one supernatural leap at the very beginning?
Nothing in science will ever tell you there wasn't a creator. The possibility of a multiverse might even give you an answer to where that creator came from. But maybe we have to let go of the promise of immortality to truly feel alive here and now. To value each other now. To properly appreciate what we have. Maybe it's part of growing up, or it was, before people started making promises that nothing could keep. Maybe in the future we won't mess up our kids from the start by telling them myths are true. Maybe we'll tell them other magical stories about how walls that look like they'll stand forever can fall overnight and how, with the whole world watching, a Chinese man carrying his shopping once, just for a few moments, became more than a human being. Why live in constant shame as a fallen sinner, an unworthy, a second-class being? Why even try to believe that when you could learn enough about the universe in just a few books to look in the mirror each morning and know that your family tree goes all the way back to light itself. And all you have to do to see it is let go.